Hello and welcome to this video for module 4 of the Netbox Zero to Hero training course. If you haven't already checked out the earlier modules yet, then you can find the link to them in the notes below to get started. For this demo, I'm using a Docker instance of Netbox running locally on my laptop. If you would like to follow along with the demo, then you can easily do that too. There are a couple of links down below to help you spin up your own instance of Netbox, along with a link to the notes that accompany this video module. In this video, our network engineer Susan will populate Netbox with the IP addressing and VLAN data for the planned new Brisbane branch office. To do this, Susan will be using the Ansible automation platform and in particular, the Ansible Galaxy collection for Netbox. Again, you will find links to all of these resources in the accompanying Git repository. Okay, so we're logged into Netbox as Susan and as you can see, there is no data yet in the IPAM section in the center of the homepage. Susan has already followed the setup instructions for Ansible, has activated the new virtual environment and has set her environment variables up for the API URL and the API token. Please do check the instructions in the course notes if you need help with this initial setup of Ansible. So if you're not familiar with Ansible, it has a feature called roles, which allows you to structure your playbooks in a very nice way. For example, if I expand the roles directory, you'll see it contains subdirectories for each of the roles that we have playbooks for. For example, if you expand the assign IP addresses role, it has two further directories, tasks and vars. Within tasks, there is a file called main.yaml. This is what's known as a playbook in Ansible terms. It has a name, and then on line three, you can see that it is using the netbox IP address module. This module then takes data in the form of a dictionary in lines four through to seven. Lines four and five are simply the Netbox API and API token variables that Ansible will look up from the environment on the local system. Note that anything within quotes and double curly braces is a variable that Ansible will look up at the time the playbook is executed. Line six is another dictionary of key value pairs, which I will come to in a second. Line seven is the state which is set to present, meaning that the Ansible playbook will ensure that this data exists in Netbox when it runs. Another state you could use here would be absent, meaning that the data would be removed from Netbox. Lines eight to 11 are Ansible's loop a mechanism, which tells it to loop over all the items in the data dictionary when it runs. Notice that line eight tells the playbook to loop over the variable called IP addresses. And this is found in the file called main.yaml in the vars directory. So if you take a look at that, you can see that this again is a data dictionary in YAML format which has key value pairs for each of the IP addresses that we're going to add. Breaking down the first one, the assigned object is the device and interface that we're assigning the IP address to. Then the prefix that we're requesting an IP address from, along with the status. In this case, as the new site is not live yet, the status is reserved. And lastly, the tenant, which is the consulting department. So the playbook will loop over this list of IP address assignments until it has processed them all. Now there are other data parameters that you might want to include when adding IP addresses, and you can refer to the documentation for the Ansible collection for more information. You can scroll down and find the module that you're looking for. In this case, it's the Netbox IP address module. And here is the full list of parameters and some example playbook code too. Now each of the roles we've defined is structured in exactly the same way as this one. So feel free to explore the rest of them yourself in the roles directory. Okay, so to run all these playbooks to populate the IPAM data, you need to run the main playbook called populate netbox ipam.yaml. So let's just run through what this does. So Ansible is all about playbooks and this playbook has a number of plays in it, each one calling one of the roles that we've just looked at and the playbook will execute each play in order. Breaking this down further, we can see that play one is calling the create RIRs role which as we know is going to add the RFC 1918 RIR into Netbox. The other parameters in each play are connection local, hosts local host, and gather facts false. These mean that the playbook is being executed on the local machine and not connecting to any remote hosts. And as such, we do not need to gather any facts about the local machine when the playbook executes. Okay, and then the rest of the playbook has plays two through six which call the other roles that we want to run to populate the IPAM data in Netbox. Okay, so this is all great, but you must be thinking, can you just run the playbook now and get to the good part? Okay, to do that, you switch to the terminal and enter the command ansible playbook populate netbox ipam.yaml and hit enter to kick off the playbook run. 
and you can see how the playbook runs through each of the plays that call the roles to be executed. And that completed OK. So running through the output from the top, you can safely ignore the warning about group names. You can see that all the plays have completed and for each play, there is a list of each item that was looped over from the data in the vars main.yaml file for each role. For example, there was only a single RIR created, RFC 1918, but there were three aggregates created. Moving down, there are the prefix and VLAN roles, the supernet prefix, the VLAN group, and the VLANs. When you see output in yellow like this, it means that answer will change something when it was required. In this case, the requirement was for all of the items to be present in the netbox database. And as they were not already present, then Ansible created them. And at the bottom in the play recap, it states that there were six changes, one for each of the plays. One term you hear a lot with Ansible is idempotency, which essentially means that the result of a successfully performed request is independent of the number of times it is executed. So in our case, this means that we can run the playbook again and it will not make any more changes to Netbox as the data we wanted to add is now present. And we can prove this by running the playbook again. As it completes, notice how the output is now green, meaning that Ansible knows that the data is already present in Netbox, so it does not make any more changes. And in the play recap, you can see there were no changes made. Okay, so flip on over back to the Netbox web interface and hit refresh, and we can see that there is now some IP data in there. Dig a little to explore what's there, starting with RIRs. There is RFC 1918, and it has three aggregates. 192.168.00/16 now has a prefix and some utilization. So click on that, and then prefixes. There is the Brisbane site supernet with a reserved status, and note how the remaining IP space has been carved up automatically ready for future use. Okay, so next click prefix and VLAN roles, and there are the roles we created. Click on VLAN groups, and there is the Brisbane VLANs group, and it has a scope of the AUBRI01 site, and it has six VLANs that were also created by Ansible. So far, so good. And now that we have the main IPAM data populated, including the supernet, we need to add the prefixes. And there is a separate playbook to do that called Create Prefixes. And if we look at this one, it has a single play that calls the Create Prefixes role. So if you go to the role and open the main.yaml file in the tasks directory, you can see that this playbook is using the netbox prefixes Ansible module and looping over a list of key value pairs for each prefix we need to create. But note the extra parameter here, first available with a value of yes. This tells netbox to assign the first available prefix. And if you look at the data this playbook is looping over, you can see that the data dictionaries consist of the parent prefix, which is the supernet for Brisbane, the prefix length, the site, the tenant, and the VLAN. So run this playbook to create the prefixes with the command ansible-playbook create prefixes.yaml. And this completes OK. Remember with this one, as it is requesting the next available prefix each time, every time you run it, it will try to allocate a new prefix, so you would not run this one multiple times. OK, great. So the next playbook in the collection is going to create some virtual interfaces for each of the VLANs on the access switch so we can assign them the IP addresses. So to run this one, it is ansible-playbook create VLAN interfaces.yaml. And again, this one is looping over a list of dictionaries defining the interfaces. And that has completed OK. And the last playbook to run is the one to assign individual IP addresses from the prefixes we already created to the interfaces on our devices. Again, this one will take the first available IP address when it's executed. So that is ansible-playbook assign IP addresses.yaml. And you can see that this is looping over all the interfaces that we want to assign IP addresses for, including the new RVI interfaces that we just set up on the switch. And that brings the whole IPAM piece for the new Brisbane site together down to the individual IP addresses. So flip back to the web interface and check the results, starting with the prefixes. The supernet of 192.168.00/22 now has six child prefixes. And if you click on 192.168.2.0/26, for example, this is the network management prefix. This is assigned to the Netman VLAN 50 in the Brisbane VLANs group. There are six IP addresses in use, and if you click the first one, it has been assigned to interface ME0 on the switch. If you click on the device name and then interfaces, you can also see the IP address that was assigned to interface GE000, 
Then if you click on page two of the results, you can see the other IP address assignments, including the ones to the newly created virtual routed interfaces for each VLAN. So finally, click back on the home page, and now you can see that there are now three aggregates, seven prefixes, 12 IP addresses, and six VLANs. So I hope that's been a useful overview of how to populate IPAM data using the Ansible Galaxy collection for Netbox. Without diving too deep into Ansible, this is a Netbox course after all, I hope you can see how easy it is to get started with Ansible and also how it can be integrated with Netbox. This kind of integration opens up so many possibilities for what you can do with Netbox as your single source of truth for your network automation efforts. And we'll be using Ansible again in later modules of this course. So once again, thanks for watching.